you know, when you think of RS components, it started 80 years ago selling radio spares. I don't think you can be an 80-year-old company if you haven't innovated, especially in the last 20 years um, during kind of the, the uh, new technologies. RS Components actually, as a catalog company, um, issued its first its, its first website over 20 years ago in the late 90s, which was which was fairly early for a paper yeah. catalog company to have the foresight of putting out a website. And obviously, initially, it was just a catalog version on the website. Mm -hmm. um, but the reality is, we've always innovated. And you know, more recently, about six or seven years ago, we launched Design Spark, and Design Spark is a community website, very much designed for. Uh, electronics and electric and mechanical designers uh, for makers and pro makers and industrial um, designers and we have almost 700,000 members on that so again yeah. one more example of how we continue innovating. Yeah so IBM very much the same way we've been around for more than 100 years uh, but it's uh, not only innovation but also constantly reinventing ourselves you know, every five to ten years there'll be a whole new shift in technology and your point about design spark um, is mirrored in what we find at IBM with our developer outreach so we're finding that we're not selling software directly to the, um, the IT department anymore. We're selling, we're getting the hearts and minds of the developers, in your case the makers, yeah. who are hacking code or making things with their Raspberry Pis and their Arduinos on the weekend. And then they come in to, on the to work on the Monday morning and say, ah, I can use that same technology I was playing with at the weekend here in my job. And so it becomes a, a commercial opportunity. And um, you know, we, we reach a much broader audience and it goes into the commercial sector via those makers and innovators and hackers that we uh, like, to, like to chat to at the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting, the, the, the maker movement, what I find fascinating by it, and I guess it's you know, somewhat similar to, to what your story is, half of our innovation is because we pursue new technologies. And obviously, um, you know, the single board computing or IoT are technologies that we take very seriously and we look at, and we will try and develop value propositions for them. But you know, the other half, or maybe more than that, is just because our actual customers drive the innovation. Mm -hmm. um, by watching them use those technologies, by watching what makers are doing with single board computers um, and some of their inventions and innovations, it just invites us to then uh, you know, put our arms around them and provide a community that supports that. And obviously, you know, eventually look at where the business opportunities are for us to then leverage those movements right. and do more business. But, but really the fascinating thing to me is how the customer is driving more than half of the innovation that we're seeing on the Design Spark marketplace, for example. Yeah, we see that very much too with our design thinking approach, so an outside in approach to um, developing new software and services. You know, it's very much everything we do is driven by what our clients are telling us, the innovations that we're seeing them playing with in the marketplace, novel ways of using our existing components put together in a new way. They think, ooh, I hadn't thought of that, that's a cool thing. We can now take that to market for a broader audience. And the kind of flip side of that is that that leads to a much more agile way of doing things. So as we've done with, um, with your, um, your, your marketplace, is you had an idea, something you wanted to get to market quickly in a sort of a minimal form, you know, sort of minimal viable product. And through our um, IBM Cloud Garage, we were able to work with your folks to very quickly put together the, the, the structure they're envisaging uh, so that we could quickly try something and you know, it isn't necessarily how its final form will be but at least we can put it into the marketplace and get people to play with it you can try out your idea for an innovative new disruptive platform uh, and we can help you build that and then as the um, as people start to use it you get feedback on it you see what works and what doesn't yeah. work then we can iterate do some more agile iterations yeah. and, uh, and bring it up to be a, a truly industry disrupting platform. Yeah. I actually, I, I really like the partnership that we've had with Cloud Garage because it's so, it's so emblematic of the innovation journey we're on. Um, you know, five years ago as a company, we, we had not yet in any shape or form um, embraced agile. We only had big IT waterfall projects. We tended to work with very few large strategic vendors. And of course, that ecosystem has shifted very, very rapidly. Today, we work with you know, many different partners, um, some very strategic on longer term projects, and some you know, much more tactical and short term projects. We, we have embraced agile methodology, we're embracing cloud, we're embracing software as a service, we're embracing um, open source, mm -hmm. which for, again, for an 80 year old company, would have been almost unthinkable five years ago. But you know, the fascinating thing to me about this um, maker marketplace that we work on with IBM Cloud Factory is, is precisely that partnership of 
let's co-create, let's try something, see how it goes, and then just again take customer feedback to continue um, innovating on it. So you worked with our cloud garage here in London, and there are um, 11 other cloud garages sp spread around the world for other clients to use, whichever geography they happen to be in. And they use a, a very specific sort of garage methodology which we've developed, which enables us to start with design thinking to help the clients sort of tease out what it is they're actually looking for and to nail down the, you know, the, the key components that would be worth going after first, uh, rather than trying to sort of boil a massive ocean, just trying to okay, let's nail down the, the bits that we care about initially in, as the kind of the, um, the embodiment or the, the proof of that idea we've had. Um, and then through multiple agile iterations, uh, bring the thing to market quickly, working, sitting alongside your people. Yeah. So you've got the people with the vision, the people with the, um, the industry expertise, the people with the links to your back-end systems, link it all together. Um, and we've got the, you know, the cloud technologies and the, um, the web front-end skills to be able to yeah. very quickly mash that system together um, and, and come up with something that actually works and people can actually use yeah. for real in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah, that's right. No, I mean, we're, we're very happy, I think, the. Uh, you know, it's fascinating to see how you launch something that would have been unthinkable a few months ago and then see the take up. And, you know, on Design Spark, what's very fascinating to us is we have um, almost nearing 700,000 design engineers, and many of them are, you know, either hobby makers or even industrial makers. Mm -hmm. And um, th there was this real need for them to say, listen, we, we actually tinker with something, and we'd like to offer it to the community. There was a real need for that. And so now that we're offering a venue for the makers to sell their own inventions, if you will, and yeah. other makers to buy them, um, we're seeing that exchange flourish. And it, it, it's, it's just been a very, uh, it's, it's been a very great experience to see how quickly we were able to offer that to that community and see how it's now flourishing with, um, together with IBM. Um, so that resonates yeah. very strongly with me. I'm a, a Design Spark member and okay, indeed a member of the Guild of Makers, so I consider myself to be a maker. And uh, I think that ability to bring something that you're making in very small volumes to a, a, sort of a test market yeah. before you put it into full production, um, or maybe that's as far as it ever goes, maybe you can make, make, yeah. make, make things in ones and twosies, but that ability to get to a marketplace of people who will accept it as not a kind of completely mass-produced product, but something which is kind of, they know is made by a maker with the love and care that makers uh, lavish on things. Um, I think it's great to have a platform for that. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, the other, the other internal debate we had obviously was around when you launch something in a beta and something that is somewhat untested and, is, and it is a bit risky, to what extent do you internally um, almost mitigate the risks around that? But to me, the fascinating thing about this maker movement and about the Design Spark community is it doesn't have to be perfect. There's mm -hmm. a very high tolerance for the fact that because it is a dynamic environment and because they understand innovation, they're quite comfortable with the fact that something innovative um, is going to be developed and tinkered with and obviously through Agile will continuously be improved and, and um, you know, new features and functionalities will be added. Yeah, I think the, um, the, the community forums sort of on, the, on the back of Design Spark yeah. are very supportive as well. I mean, yeah. I worried that it might be sort of competitive with people sort of protecting their their little empires, but in fact, it's quite the opposite. And people are more than happy to say, oh, hey, I, I tried that, but yeah. that didn't work, or yeah. um, I put this through, I, I discussed this with my solicitor, and they said the best way to do this legal part is to do yeah. this. And those people are so forthcoming with really helpful things, because as you say, it is a community. Yeah. It's like we're all in it together. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's a very powerful thing. Well, and, and you're right. I mean, it's a community, and ultimately, um, the, the growth of that whole space, um, I'm convinced, allows for potential and for growth for everyone. Um, it may get competitive eventually, but at this point, um, you know, I think it's a community that still very much is holding hands together and mm -hmm. trying to just grow the um, single board computing movement and the maker movement. And some of the success stories we're seeing of, you know, startups or, or young makers who started, you know, PyTop is a good example mm -hmm. where um, university students came up with, um, you know, a, a device around the Raspberry Pi to teach STEM in schools. And now it's been turned into a multi-million dollar company. Yeah, um, yeah. it's a fantastic it's success story. story yeah. We're <laughs> very proud of that story and, 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 and Jesse and what he has done. And you know, we, we'd love to see many more like that. And that's the key thing. You provided the platform. And through your collaboration with the IBM Cloud Garage, you were able to get that disruptive idea into the marketplace very quickly. So you're kind of first to market, first mover advantage. And um, it, I suspect others will follow. But you know, you'll have the, the definitive platform. And uh, let's hope it you know, 
community just gels around that. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. the plan. Yeah, that's the plan. And what do you see about the future? What's uh, what's coming next? Well, uh, you know, I'd be a multi-billionaire if I knew the answer <laughs> to that. I, th I think th the fascinating thing about the future is nobody really knows. Um, we're fascinated by some of the trends we see. Um, obviously, IoT and industrial IoT is still very nascent, yep. um, but a huge opportunity for us and, and one we're very, very closely involved in. Um, you know, the role that artificial intelligence and machine learning will play as part of that, um, or, or even separately, is obviously yep. fascinating. And uh, I don't think any company um, in any shape or form in the technology space can ignore the fact that artificial intelligence has to be part of the conversation. And, and how you leverage that, uh, both for your customers as well as for your internal efficiency. Um, you know, blockchain, I think, is a very other good example where a lot of people talk of the cryptocurrency side of blockchain, mm -hmm. but I'm actually much more fascinated by just the general ledger aspect of secure yeah, transactions yeah. and what that can mean for manufacturing, for supply chain, um, for innovation. 3D printing um, may seem old by now. Um, it certainly is new. But I think the uses of 3D printing are still very, very nascent. Uh, and and we're the price performance as well has changed dramatically. So no, absolutely. People, people like me can afford to have a 3D yeah, printer yeah. and actually do things with it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I think we will see a world where you know, many more of our consumables nowadays will be either printed at home or you know, printed on a kind of pick and pack delivery place somewhere around the corner of your house. Yeah, so on demand, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah, fascinating. I'd, I'd say the world is our oyster. And they're, they're getting you know, to the point I was making earlier, some of that is driven by the technology itself, but the real innovation will probably be driven by our customers identifying the opportunities they have for them and then asking us to use our platform to then help them develop those ideas. So I certainly totally agree with what you said about IoT and blockchain. And in fact, we're seeing a lot of demand for the combination of IoT with blockchain. Mm -hmm. That's where some of the best use cases are coming out, particularly things like custody transfer down a supply chain where IoT is providing the sensing and then the blockchain is providing the confirmation and the distributed ledger for you know, increased visibility up and down for track and trace yeah. and um, you know, food uh, provenance and stuff like that. That's right. The other thing, big thing we're seeing a lot of at the moment is uh, uh, chatbots mm. driven by AI in the back end, but with people not wanting to sit on, on hold to a call center for ages, yeah. they'd much rather have an asynchronous conversation just like you do with your mates on WhatsApp or Twitter or whatever, you know, whatever your favorite social platform is, people much rather interact with your business through a, a chat session, and we're seeing huge demand for that. That's, uh, so that's kind of the, the immediate next big thing as far as I can see, but I think AR and VR, augmented reality and virtual reality, are going to be uh, really big, especially when you think about um, sort of omnimodal interactions. So you might have part of the, the transaction on your phone, part of it on your tablet, uh, part of it through a voice, a conversation with a voice assistant, and then you might goggle in to a virtual yeah. environment to finish off the transaction in there. And the, what that one transaction, and the, that one interac uh, interaction has moved seamlessly across those different, those different media. I think it's hugely exciting. Yeah, well, I, I, I agree with you, and, and I, I think you touched upon a whole bunch of technologies, uh, every single one of which we currently have some alpha experiments happening and going on, um, you know, whether it's voice, whether it's virtual reality. Um, what's fascinating about um, you know, RS components is we have almost a million SKUs. And oftentimes it may be a component that an engineer or maintenance engineer hasn't seen in, in years since they last yeah. installed <laughs> it. So you know, when you think of image recognition or when you think about you know, virtual reality instructions of how to install it back into, yep. in, into a conveyor belt or into a machine, um, when you think about uh, you know, again the chatbot in terms of being able to talk to an engineer, but some of those queries being able to be automated. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, again, it, it, and it's, it's what, what we find so fascinating with innovation is that even though there's this, this openness and this plethora of avenues, it's very difficult to know exactly which one will win. Yeah. And so the reality is you have to have this continuous cycle of really being in all of them yeah. up to a certain point mm -hmm. and then just um, kind of jump on the occasion when you see one of them taking off. Back to our job again. Exactly. Back to our job. <laughs> That's right. Well, we look forward to working with you on some of those technologies in our uh, IBM Cloud Garage in the near future.